Shalom. First off, I want to give all praise, glory, and honor to Yahweh, Bahashem, Yahweh Shai, Bahashem, Rakakudash. Double honors to the apostles and the elders of Great Millstone. Salutations to the hopeful elect scattered throughout the four corners of the earth. And to all my brothers out here preaching this truth to you, I say Shalom. This is Amatazar from the Chicago camp coming back at you again with another lesson entitled Psalms 5. Psalms 5 is a short chapter and it's a prayer set to music. I can only imagine what King David had in mind for the melody for this psalm. But let's get into it. We're going to start from the top. Verse 1, to the chief musician upon the Heloth, a psalm of David. Give ear to my words, O Yahweh, consider my meditation. Hearken unto the voice of my cry, my king and my power, for unto thee will I pray. My voice shall thou hear in the morning, O Yahweh. In the morning will I direct my prayer unto thee and will look up. For thou art not a power that have pleasure in wickedness, neither shall evil dwell with thee. The foolish shall not stand in thy sight. Thou hatest all workers of iniquity. So the foolish are the workers of iniquity, and the workers of iniquity are the foolish. What else does the Bible have to say about the foolish? All right, let's look at uh, Proverbs 14 and 9. Proverbs 14 and 9. And it reads, Fools make a mock at sin, but among the righteous there is favor. So what does it mean to mock? All right, to mock means to scoff at, right? To jeer, all right? To, to to basically mimic basically be a damn asshole that's really what it boils down to all right it's back to psalms 5 so the foolish shall not stand in thy sight thou hatest all workers of iniquity thou shalt destroy them that speak leasing Yahweh will abhor the bloody and deceitful man. So leasing is lying, okay? So that's what we're about to get into about this lying, bloody man. Verse 7, But as for me, I will come into thy house in the multitude of thy mercy, and in thy fear will I worship toward thy holy temple. Lead me, O Yahweh in thy righteousness because of mine enemies make thy way straight before my face now to make thy way straight before his face means to make things difficult so that's what straight means straight mean meaning difficult so if a person say that they're in straits that means they're in difficulties okay so david is saying that his enemies are making his way difficult Let's read it again. Lead me, O Yahweh, in thy righteousness, because of mine enemies make thy way straight before my face. For there is no faithfulness in their mouth. Their inward part is very wickedness. Their throat is an open sepulcher. They flatter with their tongue. So verse 9, right, is talking about a very, very distinct personality flaw or character, character character trait of Esau Edom they're liars everything that comes out of their mouth is deceit the Bible says their tongue frame it deceit the Bible also says that it says that they are estranged from the womb and soon as they go forth they go forth speaking lies okay so let's Let's look at a few scriptures on what the Lord talks about Esau and his tongue. Okay. Proverbs 50 and 19. 
Proverbs 50. No, sorry. Psalms, Salaki. Psalms 50 and 19. 50 and 19. And it reads, Thou givest thy mouth to evil, and thy tongue frameth deceit. Okay, there is a book out called Double Speak. Now, this book, Double Speak, is written by an Edomite. And basically, what he's done in his profession for close to 30 years, basically has studied the subject of double speak. Because Esau speaks with a forked tongue, and this is so phenomenal that this man compiled a book about it. All right, because he's basically talking about how Esau lies in every facet okay of our reality whether it's economics business medicine uh law it, it doesn't matter what it is the food industry he lies about everything an example of double speak that i can give you two examples of double speak okay gain of function gain of function we heard fauci talking about gain of function at the start of the pandemic right also, you have sugar free. If you go into a uh, let's say you're a diabetic, you go into the grocery store and you're looking for something that's sugar free. It's because you want something that's not going to affect your sugar levels, your blood sugar. You want you, you don't want your blood sugar to rise. But Esau lies. OK, in all of his packaging and he'll say something is sugar free and it's not sugar free. So when Esau says something is sugar free, what he's saying is it's free from granulated table sugar. But there's all different types of other sugars. OK, so that's why when it says that it says that their tongue is like an open sepulcher. Well, if you listen to him and you diabetic, you going you going you going to mess around and die. All right, let's go to Psalms 58 and 3. And it reads, The wicked are estranged from the womb. They go astray as soon as they be born, speaking lies. Okay? Psalms 55 and 21. Through thy precepts I get understanding. 21. It reads, The words of his mouth were smoother than butter, but were, war, Salakia, was in his heart. His words were softer than oil, yet were they drawn swords. You see? So you never trust thine enemy, right? No matter what. Because he is created. All right? He's created. Now, the, the Lord is telling you through scripture who he is and what he is and what he does. Now, if you don't listen to Yahweh and he's explaining to you what this man is all about and you continue to have faith or trust in him, that's your ass. Bottom line. All right, let's get back to Psalms 5. All right. So, let's see. We'll reread 9. For there is no faithfulness in their mouth. Their inward part is very wickedness. Their throat is an open sepulcher, which is a grave. They flatter with their tongue. 10. Destroy thou them, O power. Let them fall by their own counsels. Cast them out in the multitude of their transgressions, for they have rebelled against thee. What is meant by their own counsels? All right, let's go to Psalm 64. So we find out what their own counsels are. Psalm 64 and 2. Here's the counsel. It's the secret counsel. 
Hide me from the secret counsel of the wicked, from the insurrection of the workers of iniquity, who wet their tongue, wet means to sharpen, who wet their tongue like a sword and bend their bows to shoot their arrows, even bitter words, that they may shoot in secret at the perfect, which is Israel. Suddenly do they shoot at him and fear not. They encourage themselves in an evil matter. They commune of laying snares privily. They say, who shall see them? They search out iniquities. They accomplish a diligent search. Both the inward thought of every one of them and the heart is deep. But the Most High shall shoot at them with, his at, with, with an arrow. And suddenly shall they be wounded. So they shall make their own tongue to fall upon themselves. All that see them shall flee away. So as I was talking about that, that double speak book, that's, this is an example. Psalm 64. So they shall make their own tongue to fall upon themselves. All right. So they, they understand what they're doing, that the double speak and everything else and their forked tongue. And they telling on themselves through their uh, own book. Okay. All right, let's go back to Psalms 5. Almost done. Psalms 5. All right. Destroy thou them, O power. Let them fall by their own counsels. Those were the secret counsels. Cast them out in the multitude of their transgressions, for they have rebelled against thee. Oh, let's talk about the rebellion. All right, go to Psalms 83 and 5. Psalms 83 and 5, because they are confederate against the Lord. Uh-huh. 83 and 5, for they have consulted together with one consent. They are confederate against thee, the tabernacles of Edom and the Ishmaelites. Of Moab and the Hagarenes and Gabal and Ammon and Amalek and the Philistines with the inhabitants, inhabitants of Tyre. Ashur also is joined with them. They have hope in the children of Lot. Selah. So there you have it. Okay. These are the nations that are confederate against Yahweh Bashem, Yahweh Shai, and their, and their elect. Okay. Back to Psalms. Five. All right. Verse uh, 11. But let all those that put their trust in thee rejoice. Let them ever shout for joy because thou defendest them. And let them also that love thy name be joyful in thee. You got to know the name. Okay. You got to know and love the name of Yahweh by Shem Yahweh Shai. All right. Proverbs 18 and 10. Proverbs 18 and 10. And it reads, the name of Yahweh is a strong tower. The righteous runneth into it and is safe. Safe. Psalms 5. All right. Let me read 11 again and close out with 12. But let all those that put their trust in thee rejoice. Let them ever shout for joy because thou defendest them. Let them also that love thy name be joyful in thee. For thou, Yahweh, will bless the righteous and with favor would thou compass him as with a shield. I pray that this lesson was edifying until the next one. Shalom.